When we think of World War II U.S. airborne forces, we think of the daring nighttime landings on D-Day in June 1944 or the tragic Operation Market Garden attack in the Netherlands three months later. Many also, because of the TV series Band of Brothers, are familiar with the incredible defence of Bastogne, mounted by the men of the 101st Airborne Division that helped turn the tide of Hitler's last big offensive in the West, in the Belgian Ardennes. We might also think of the dramatic US airborne drop over Japanese-held Corregidor Island in Manila Bay in 1945. And one fact unites all these operations and units. The men were all white or Hispanic. However, even in 1942, steps were being taken by the US government to break down the segregation that the US armed forces practiced. For in December 1942, General George C. Marshall, in charge of the U.S. Army, approved a recommendation from a committee led by Assistant Secretary of War John J. McCloy to form an all-black paratrooper unit. Black GIs remained largely forgotten or sidelined in the story of World War II. The U.S. Army was officially segregated, and black units for the most part were relegated to service and supply formations, while special units of black female nurses and clerks were also formed. The NAACP meeting with President Roosevelt to try and improve the service conditions of black personnel in the military. On the 25th of February 1943, the 555th Parachute Infantry Company was formed from volunteers, the enlisted men coming from the 92nd Infantry Division stationed in Arizona. All the officers would also be black. The company was officially activated on the 30th of December 1943 at Fort Benning, Georgia, trained and then sent to Camp McCall, North Carolina. Due to its unit number, the 555th, it was quickly christened the Triple Nickel for the five-cent coin of the same name. But even though the Airborne needed replacements due to the high casualties it sustained during the operations in Europe, particularly the Battle of the Bulge in the winter of 1944-45, Airborne Command decided against deploying the unit overseas to Europe. Instead, a threat had developed in the western United States from the Japanese. Desperate to hit out of the U.S. mainland, the Japanese had devised an ingenious plan to use the prevailing winds to carry high-altitude paper balloons across the Pacific. The balloon gondolas equipped with ballast monitors that automatically released incendiary and anti-personnel bombs once over North America. The so-called Fugo, or windship weapon, was a serious threat to life and the U.S. economy, as Japanese incendiaries could set fire to the large forests of the Pacific Northwest. There was also a very real worry that the Japanese might send balloons over equipped with biological bombs of the kind they had already used against Chinese cities, ceramic bombs containing plague-infested fleas or other horrific diseases that would affect both human and animal life. The Japanese launched over 9,300 of these balloon bombs, and over a 1,000 are recorded as having made landfall in the US, with many others also landing in Canada and Mexico. Fighter squadrons were diverted to try and shoot down as many as possible, but the balloons drifted over at over 30,000 feet and were difficult to find. In fact, even today, out of over a 1,000 that were known to have crossed into U.S. airspace, only 312 have ever been found. This was kept from the U.S. public at the time in order to forestall a panic. Instead, Secret Operation Firefly was enacted, and the paratroopers at the 555th given a vital role in the defense of the western United States. The Triple Nickel was trained as fire jumpers, effectively parachuting firefighters who could be dropped in large groups directly into areas where forest fires had begun, able to move much quicker than by road, and able also to access very remote areas, and prevent fires from spreading out of control. Once landed, and using hand tools, they would fight the fires and then remain in situ for many days in the wilderness until they could be extracted. The majority of the unit was stationed at Pendleton Field, Oregon, with a detachment at Chico, California. Dropping from C-47s, the Triple Nickel dealt with 15 serious forest fires using hand tools alone, out of a total of 28 fires dealt with by the unit in the 1945 season. 
During all those jumps, the unit only lost one man killed. From October 1945 into 1947, the Triple Nickel was attached to the famous 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, until deactivated on the 15th of December. All of the men became the new 3rd Battalion 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, and shortly thereafter, black paratroopers began to serve in all units of the 82nd Airborne, this being the first desegregated division in the US Army. After the unit was disbanded in 1950, quite a number of former triple nickel paratroopers served in the Korean War in the all-black 2nd Ranger Infantry Company Airborne, carrying out combat drops, the last all-black unit in the US Army which was disbanded in 1954. Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.